Hi there, Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Today I am in Hawaii on the island of Oahu in Waikiki and since I'm here I thought I would take the time to go and visit the Waikiki Aquarium. I was here almost a decade ago so I can't wait to go and check things out and see what changes have come about while I've been gone and talk to some of their aquarists and learn what changes are coming in the future. I think you're going to like what we have to find. The Waikiki Aquarium was only about a half a mile from the hotel that I stayed at on Oahu, so I figured since it was such beautiful weather, I would go ahead and walk there. Now, one really interesting thing about the Waikiki Aquarium is that it was established and started in 1904, making it the second oldest operating public aquarium in the United States. Now, the Living Reef is their newest exhibit. It was dedicated to the inspiring marine biologist Ruth Gates. It opened in 2019, is one of the new exhibits that has changed since I was here last. Now, I really liked this exhibit, not just because there was Heliopora on exhibit, but I liked that they showed you what the coral skeleton looked like in comparison to the living coral. That way, when you are out on the beach and you see some of the coral skeletons in the rubble, you know what the real coral coral looked like once it was alive. Now, once we got past the living reef, we went on to this wonderful mangrove exhibit that had tons of fish and it gave a great example of what these mangrove habitats look like and how they can be such a great nursery for some of the small fish. Now, of course, any mangrove exhibit is not complete without showcasing some of those archerfish. I really love archerfish. They're so interesting to watch and they're super smart. The amount of mathematics that they have to do when they are spitting at food that's above the water is really very impressive. Now, while I was here, I had the pleasure of interacting with several of the different aquarists that work here, but the one I spent the most time with, Anthony, is the coral biologist. And he took me around from tank to tank, telling me a little bit about each exhibit and some of his favorite things in them. Now, this one, as you can see, is the Reef Partners exhibit because it showcases the relationship between clownfish and all of these anemones. Now this in particular tank was one of Anthony's favorite because of that massive bubble coral that's there. He had hopes that in the future he'll be able to reduce that amount of rock work and maybe lower that colony a little bit deeper into the water to give it more space to grow. So keep an eye out when you visit to see what he's done with it. If you're familiar with Charles Delbeck, this tank is the one that he was known for creating. Now, admittedly, this tank looks a little bit different than it did when I was here 10 years ago, and I'm sure it looks different than it did when he was there, but it doesn't change the fact that it is still an impressive reef tank. It is amazing to see these large fish in here and all of the wonderful live coral. One of the things that Anthony pointed out while we were talking is that yes, it might not look like it used to, but there is room to grow. Now the large barrier reef tank isn't the only one where there's space to grow. This one and several of the other tanks nearby have plans for renovations in the future. I thought this eel tank was really interesting. There's four different species of eels here and some of them have a really interesting background. One of the things I remember from the last time was here was all of the clams and I thought it was cool to see all of them in this one tank hanging out with some of those adorable yellow tangs that are from Biota. Of course, just like every aquarium, they have jellyfish. These were some of the Cassiopeia or upside down jellyfish, but they also had moon jellyfish as well as a massive exhibit with large predators like sharks. Even though this was a fairly small aquarium, it was really hard to pick out which tanks were my favorite. Although this particular one ranks pretty high up there. And one of the reasons for it is the species that they have in it. This incredibly bright urchin at the center of the screen is one of them. But also I think I got to see my first ever Hawaiian cleaner wrasse, despite the fact that I couldn't get a good video of it. It was incredible with the bright purple that is on its tail. And it was just so fun to watch the the fish and the movements in this tank. Now this is another tank that caught my eye. I love the coralline algae that's in here. I don't typically see it growing like that in most average tanks that I've seen. So this was really a treat. 
Now another treat that I got to see while I was here was the Abe's Angel. Now I haven't ever seen one of these in person and Anthony pointed out that if you were to actually find one of these angel fish for sale because they are so rare they can fetch for prices up to $47,000 just because of how deep they are when you have to go and catch them. Now this was another treat is this wall with all of these tiny fish in these tanks. You can see that flame angelfish there, there's a couple of them in this tank, there's an adorable puffer fish, and there was a whole tank full of little porcupine puffers. I absolutely could not get enough of this tank, they were so cute hanging out in there all together. Now those weren't all of the cute fish, there were more of them. <laughs> they had this little grumpy guy who absolutely did not want to let go of his rock and his artificial uh, plants in there, but uh, they were doing some cleaning while I was there, so gotta make sure things are looking good. I don't know about you, but it's not often that I actually get to see an octopus when I'm visiting the aquarium, and the Hawaiian Day octopus was one they had on exhibit, and like its name suggests, it's very easy to spot during the day. These razorfish were just one of numerous signathid exhibits that they had here at the Waikiki Aquarium, and it was not as easy to spot some of the other species as it was to spot some of these seahorses and those razorfish just a second ago. I would never have thought of using things like leathers as a surface for them to hold on to, but Waikiki did a great job of providing different structures and habitats for them. Okay, this is the last and final exhibit that I stopped at, and it's the coral farm. What sets this one apart is that it is outside, exposed to the elements. There's no light on it except for the sun, and there's no lid. But look at the size of these colonies. It's incredibly impressive. Now, if you take a look here to this tiny little frag, this is one of the oldest corals that is in captivity. It's obviously a frag of a colony, but it boggles my mind to know that this little coral is something that is potentially older than I am. Now I'm talking about growth in this tank and look how much this coral is growing up and out of the water. Can you ask for anything more in a reef tank? That is going to conclude the end of my tour here at the Waikiki Aquarium. I want to shop at the gift shop and support them a little bit more. I love supporting the aquariums when I go and travel and I encourage you to do the same. Hopefully this visit of the Waikiki Aquarium has encouraged you to maybe stop by the next time you are on the island of Oahu and you check out all of the amazing species that they have and get to see the new renovations that are coming up in the future. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching. Aloha.